Welcome to Authentisign. Today we're going to go over how to get your forms and documents from your transaction into your e-signature program. This is a take two video for me. In the process of doing the classic video, they dropped an upgrade to Authentisign and it is completely different than the version that you might be used to. So today we're going to go over how to use the new version. We're going to start by logging into Web Forms through Matrix and you're going to go to your transactions. And we're going to choose a transaction that we're going to send to Authentisign. Once you're in the transaction dashboard, you're going to come over here to the forms widget and go down and click on go to forms. Then we're going to use our selection circles to pick the forms that we want to send into Authentisign. You can see as I'm selecting them that they're filling in the basket. Once they're in the basket, we're going to click on it. And you can see there's many options here, but for today's class, we're going to choose Authentisign. You can see here that you have the option of choosing Classic or the new version. Now, if you've used Authentisign before, you can see that this looks significantly different. And even though it might look overwhelming, all the necessary pieces are here, they just might be in a different spot. Up at the top, we have Back and Next, which will help us navigate through each step. You can also use the tabs along the side here. And even though the first tab says Signers, you can see that we're clearly looking at the documents. But let's start with the signers. You're going to click on this tab here that says Add Participants, and it's a drop down list of some uh, choices of where to add your participants from. You can add yourself, you can add new, add from a transaction add from contacts and add from Google. But we have brought our forms over from a transaction, so we have names already in there. So by clicking on add from transaction, it's going to overlay a template within Authentisign so that the tabs and signature uh, tabs go in the right spot. We just have to go through and check and make sure that everything's there. So click on add from transaction. And you can see that I have the names listed here that I have already put in my forms when I created the transaction. So I just need to select the names that are going to be involved in this particular signing. You can see by default, it uh, labels them as a remote signer. If you use the drop down, you have the option to change it to a reviewer or CC. Once you have your participants checked off, you're going to click on Select. Now you can see that each participant, each signer, has been assigned a different color. That way it's easy to follow along with the tags once you're checking the documents. If you click on the arrow to the side, it allows you to fill in missing details. You can add them to your contact info. You can change the signer type. If you have two people using the same email, this is where you're going to add the signing pin. And this is where you're going to customize the signature and the initials. You also have the option to remove this person from a signing if they're there in error. Make sure you click on Save. We can also add extra participants. For instance, let's say you would like this to go to an assistant or to admin once the signing has been complete. So we can add the participants, click on either add new or add from contacts. Choose a participant. Make sure she's a CC and then select. Now you can see that all the signers are in place and CC very last. 
So we're going to go ahead now and map the signers. Just click on the tab at the bottom, and you're just going to make sure that the signer role and the signer correspond. Once that is done, come down to the bottom and click on Assign Signature Blocks. That's going to overlay a template so any blocks and tabs will be assigned to the documents automatically. You're just going to want to go through and just double check everything. Currently, we're in SimulSign, which means first come, first serve. Whoever gets it first signs it, whoever gets it second signs it second, etc. If we want to change this to a signing order, you're just going to toggle the button at the top. And now we can assign order. We can use the crosshairs at the side to move our signers around to the uh, way that we want them to sign, to what order we want them to sign it. And of course, CC is going to be at the bottom because this person is just going to receive a copy of all the signed documents. Once we have all the signers in order, uh, the way we want them to sign, then we're going to move on to the documents. You can do that by clicking on Next or by clicking on the Documents tab. You can see here I have four documents. I can use my crosshairs to move the documents around to the order that I want them to be signed, but I can also add a document. Previously, we could only do forms in one envelope and we had to do documents in the second envelope. Now we can add the documents to the same envelope as the forms. So I have a document prepared that I want to add to my envelope along with the forms. I'm going to click on Add a Document. And I can choose from a transaction. So if you started this without going to Web Forms first, you can add the transaction now. I can upload or import from my desktop. I'm going to simply drag and drop or I can click on My Files, and this brings me back into the Documents section or the Single Forms of Web Forms. I know that my document is in a file in Documents in Web Forms, so I'm going to click here. And from the Web Forms course, we know that we can upload documents to the My Folders area. So I'm going to click on that, and I can see that my folder that I'm looking for, AuthentiSign Video, is the one where my document is sitting. So I'm going to click there. And this is the document that I want to use, so I'm going to click on the Add button. You can see now I have five documents. But I have a document that doesn't belong. I have two agreements of purchase and sale, a 100 and a 101. I don't need this document. It's there in error. So I'm going to click here and I can remove the file. I also have the option of replacing the file if I want. Now I have four documents. They're in the order that I want them signed. So now we can double check and make sure that our tags and our signature tabs are in the right area. If you need to add a signature tab, you're gonna come over here to your tools. In our tools, we have our signature actions, our signer fields, and our markup tools. So if there is an initial or a signature block missing, you're simply going to grab it, like in the previous version, and add it. You're going to toggle the buyers or any signers so that you get the appropriate one in the appropriate spot. The color coding kind of helps separate them. If I have put a signature tab in error, I'm simply going to click on it and delete it. I'm going to scroll down to the document that I added to demonstrate the signer fields and the markup tools. Okay, so this is the document that I added for demonstration purposes. So we can see first that we're going to be working with Bob Beyer. There's no signatures on here at all, so we're going to have to add a few things. One of them is a full name. I like to have the name and the date underneath the lines, so I'm going to click on Full Name. It appears here in the top corner, and I'm going to bring it down. Auto Date.
Okay, and then we can also add a timestamp or an email address if we want. If we click on the block, we can see that we can delete it. But if you come over here, there's also a few other things you can do. We can scale it, larger or smaller. And then we can set that as our default setting. We can also delete from this area. Going into the markup tools, uh, I think that you would be used to most of these. They're the same as the previous version. We can add a text box. And then once we add the text box, if you notice over here, we can change the font size, the color, the font style, whether it's bold, italic, whether the background is transparent or not, and then we can save these as our default settings. We can draw a line. Maybe you want to cross something out. We can do a strike through. And this is kind of nice because it draws a perfectly straight line. We can highlight. Maybe something in the offer you need to highlight for your clients. We can freehand. Or we can use an ellipse. The other thing that you can do is click on what you, the highlight or the ellipse or the freehand. Maybe you don't want to have it there anymore. You can come over here and you can delete it. Okay, once you click on it, you can see their settings you can use as a default or you can delete. Okay, so now that we have Bob's name down here, let's add a signature tab. Okay, I uh, don't need initials. Okay, and we'll just leave it at that. You'll notice as we click on the blocks here, we can do the same thing. We can add defaults. So is it going to be a required block, name block, date stamp, time stamp? What do we want to happen? when we add a signature block here. You can see the required designation goes at the top. So if I toggle it off, that required is gone. I can scale it larger or smaller. Okay, and I can just save those. I can also use text line, which is something new and I can add this into any document. Okay, if I use it in a form or if I use it in a document that I've added. This means that when this goes to your client for signature, they have an opportunity to add a note for themselves inside of the document. I can see this being used more in documents we add than in the forms themselves. Okay, so now we have the documents with all of our markups and our signer fields added. You can go into the options tab and you can add expiration dates and reminders if you would like. You can add the Authentisign ID position. You can change that from the top left to another area. And then you're going to click on next. We've checked our documents, we've checked our forms, everything is in place. We're gonna click on next. And this is where you're gonna send for signature. You can come back in just like the previous version and customize your invites and you can add a message to each sender. Make sure you click on save and then you can send your invites out. There's a few other tips and tricks uh, some other cool things that we can do, but for now, this is going to get you using the new AuthentiSign, and we'll probably do a short video later on with more of the tips and tricks. To register for a Web Forms class, you can find registration instructions on Matrix under News and Alerts.
or by accessing Realtor link under the Education tab, or by sending an email to learning at lstar.ca.